Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week, I was actually inspired to share something, and I don't often share something that somebody else has shared, but it really touched me and it was such a beautiful metaphor that I thought it would be really useful for some of you to hear it. So this week it's going to be about this metaphor that I heard, and it was through listening to a podcast interview with Michael Singer, Michael J. Singer, and he wrote the books Untethered Soul and The Surrender Experiment. He's somebody who I really admire. Um, they're not many people. Admire isn't even the right word. Um, he's inspiring to me, who he is and his being. He's one of the few people in the world that I see and he seems to glow from the inside out, a little bit like Eckhart Tolle does. And the truths that he, speak, they, he speaks, they're just so beautiful and clear and simple. Um, so anyway, um, one of the truths that I heard him speak was something that I thought would be really interesting to share. So quite often, I think I've spoken in the past, I know I've talked about it many times, is we have things that happen to us. Um, so emotion, emotional hurts and wounds, misunderstandings, things that we feel that um, we've been wronged by, um, they sort of lodge energetically inside of us. And it can be very hard to identify them. And I just love the way he described them. And I've, I've changed it slightly. So I'll give you what he described them as. And then I'm going to share how I see them. <laughs> so he described them as splinters. And he said it's really strange because the way we behave about these emotional wounds that we pick up along our journey in life is that instead of pulling them out and dealing with them, we, we go into defending ourselves. So, for instance, um, I'm trying to think of, oh, okay, <laughs> I've thought of one that I can share with you. My parents divorced when I was six, and I mean, obviously, as a six-year-old, it's a fairly traumatic thing to go through. And there were times when I felt very lost and quite alienated from my family, like I didn't really belong. And so anything that makes me feel like I'm being excluded or pushed out of or whatever can trigger those old wounds and hurts. Um, yeah. <laughs> and... And I just thought this analogy was so beautiful that instead of dealing with those hurts and wounds from the past, what most of us do is we go into defensive protective mode and it's like having a splinter. And instead of pulling the splinter out, we start getting angry if somebody touches it or knocks it or comes near us and we think they're going to. And that's how we are when we react to these perceived hurts and injuries that we've picked up along our path in life. And my slight change on his analogy is I think of them like glass splinters. And I'm sure nearly everybody has stepped on or got a splinter of glass in their hand. And sometimes they can be so fine that you can't even see them. But each time you knock it, it causes you pain. And that's kind of what I think these sort of emotional wounds that we hold on to are like. We can't see them. We don't always know they're there. But when we've been knocked a number of times in the same spot and it causes us pain, we start to get defensive and protective of ourselves in that area. And when we're talking about emotional wounds, that protective defensive nature in regard to those wounds can then become part of who we think we are. And I just really, um, for this particular episode today, would just like to ask you, especially over this festive season, which is turning out to be one of the strangest festive seasons I've ever had in my entire life, just to be aware, because especially when we're with family, they're the ones that know these little sensitive spots better than anybody else. And they don't always mean to trigger them. But if you're not aware of them, you might already be defensive and guarded or withdrawn. And it's just to observe your behaviour when you're with those nearest and dearest or when you're interacting with them, even if you can't physically be close to them. And just to sort of ask yourself, is this something from the past that I'm defending myself from or protecting myself from? Or is it really the truth? Um, and hopefully when you start seeing things more clearly, you can choose to be open with your family and to enjoy them and love them and make the most of them. And for all of those that, of you that are celebrating this festive season, however strange or separated or peculiar it might be, I really truly wish you a really special Christmas and New Year and a fabulous New Year to everybody, even if you don't celebrate Christmas. 
and many blessings and best wishes for the new year. And I really do hope that it's everything that you would dream it to be. If you want to know more about my work or if you want any to get hold of any of the references that I've made in this very short little video, just look below in the show notes and you'll find links to everything. I also run short courses and have a number of different resources on my website and access to that will also be in the show notes below. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.